Hello, fall. Welcome, everyone, to the fall equinox special. What's going down today? We've got the Fibonacci sequence. And that is related to five, as well as the pine cone and the pineal gland. Woo! I'm excited. This is the Fibonacci sequence. It's how we go from zero to a seed and we achieve growth. And it's organic growth. It's organic expansion. Well, what else are we doing in fall? We're connecting to color. We're also connecting to food. That's what I really think of when I start thinking of fall. Yummy, yummy vegetables and all the colors of the rainbow. Now, why is that important? Well, we know we are healing our chakras right now. We're cleansing those chakras. And what do we need to do so? What's the best way to do so? Life foods. Fruits and veg vegetables of the colors of the chakras. We have red, the root. Orange, sacral. Yellow, solar plexus. We have the heart is green. The third eye. Oh, let's not forget the throat being blue. The third eye being indigo, and the crown being violet or white. What does the Fibonacci sequence do? It's a pattern. Who invented this? Fibonacci. He decided that he was going to do this little experiment. And he was doing this experiment with rabbits, and he was watching how rabbits created, procreated. Mm, that's very interesting, isn't it? It's a pattern of how we procreate. We, we have zero. That's where we're starting off. Then we have one and one, two and three and five and eight. And I'm going to link a great some great videos down below of all the stuff we're talking about i'm gonna find some later on i know there's got to be videos going down on youtube now what are we doing we're doing one plus one right let's start actually at zero so we have zero plus one equals one one plus one equals two one plus two equals three two plus three equals five three plus five equals eight and so on, because it's organic continued expansion. We can keep on expanding. Now, this works in harmony with five, because that's how we're going to grow. And we're, go we're going to grow our outer and middle of equal proportions, our outer and our middle. So within and without of equal proportions, because we don't want to be unbalanced. We are achieving balance. We know that. That's what this is all about. Now look at the golden ratio. Look at that lovely number. 1.618033. And it's related to the golden section. We will get into these topics later on down the road. How this works in harmony with the Fibonacci sequence, there's actually math in it. And it's connected, they're actually connected, which is so cool about life, right? Like the connections, you see all the little connections and when you start connecting things within, you start connecting things without. If you square these numbers and add the sequences together and then divide the numbers, you get every single time very close to this number and that sounds very comp like i know that doesn't make a lot of sense what i'm saying but um i watched a ted talk that did a really good job of explaining this because honestly to understand a lot of this stuff takes time like you have to meditate with it you have to practice it and so you know if we can break it down and try to learn it over time and try not to give up because it may seem a little frustrating at first. Remember, this is, this is, it's really, 
it's really empowering to know how we expand here on the planet. It's really empowering to learn about the solar system and the universe we live in. It's very empowering to start living, to start learning and live in life. And then your whole universe starts to change. And one of the most beautiful things that starts happening is that we start connecting through our pain and that's how we start healing. We make connections through our pain. And that is a, that allows us, you know, we put ourselves out there. We're so connected to the oneness. We're raw. We're ripped open. Then we connect and we expand and we heal. And it's what's reflected back to us that allows us to heal. Where do we see the Fibonacci sequence? Right here. There's a lovely pattern right there. As well as here we go look at that we can't forget the pine cone now some interesting facts about the pine cone this is a whole bunch of seeds and this can stay on the tree for like up to 10 years and it can contract when it's cold and animals are after it and it can also expand when it's warm and then these seeds come apart like little helicopters and look at that look at that pattern look at the pattern in which it grows in this is the tree's reproductive organ its reproductive system this is how it's going to expand let's talk the pineal gland. Let me get the board going with the pineal gland drawing that I'm about to make over here. Welcome to my lovely drawing over here. This is not my best word, but it will do. The pineal gland. that allow us to do that allows us to connect to our ancestors because we also know we need to connect to our angels and ancestors what are we doing we're connecting through our pain to reflect love that's very important we don't want to keep reflecting our pain back we want to reflect love because this is all about The light of our body and the seed of our soul. That's what the pineal gland is. It allows us to see the light within the dark. And that's important. Because that's what we need to do. We need to see, we need to see that light when we're in the dark. We need to transmute. We need to heal. We need to be able to pay attention to our bodies. What are our bodies saying, us, saying to us? Because then... What is our soul saying to us? What is our mind saying to us? What do we need to heal? There's floating crystals within here. This produces melatonin, allowing us to connect to our own circadian rhythms within. And that's really important because we need to know ourselves. We need to get into our rhythm. We are going to be taking a break here at School for the Fool. I am, I need to finish healing up. And we are going to reach our one-year cycle here at School for the Fool. And we're going to take a break and have school out. And school will return back in October. And we are going to, of course, start our new cycle. And until then, I will, when I feel called to post an oracle from a beautiful oracle that I really like. Um, it helps navigate your way, it's navigating your journey. And it's a really nice oracle, And but it's time, it's time for us to close out this year here and to expand anew. And that's why I really wanna thank you guys for joining me here and I'm looking forward to the next cycle here and seeing what we're going to create, what we're gonna see, what we're gonna connect to, who we're gonna connect to. 
So thank you guys for joining me. It means so much. And you are all welcome to continue to leave messages and reach out. And I will do my best when I am called to reach out to do so. Now let's get our messages. Let's get our reading. Let's connect to the light. Let's connect to the ancestors, the angels. Let's transmute some darkness. I love you guys. Okay, so the reading is all set up and ready to go. I was going to air this last night, but when I went to go and put it up, the reading was missing. Part of it was gone. And that was because I was supposed to be here today. That's how these things work. I am excited to see what the message is. The message we got that I was not able to share the video, the reading, was the Emperor. That was the main energy that we need. We need the Emperor because we're going to balance the child with the feminine energy. Feminine is present. The feminine is playing with that child. Letting that child create with a pen. Now we need that Emperor energy because we're going to balance out the female energy. We know we can't have that child become unbalanced. That would defeat the purpose of what we're doing here. Child needs a mom, child needs a dad, right? So we're gonna be whole. We're gonna be our, we're gonna be our divine masculine and divine feminine and our child within. And we have to start stringing that all together and allowing those connections to really be made because this is going to allow where we are going next. We know this is about Pluto and transformation. Number 11, this is the six of swords in the tarot. This is connected to birth, death, rebirth, and sex. This is the planet of extremes. Then we have lovely Leo energy. This is having strength. This is the strength card right here. This card is all about, we rock our light. We rock our shine. But we rock our shine when we leave our, domain, our, our domes. And when we go out into the public arena, we take our masks off and we allow our authentic vibration to be there. And that's key. That's why we really have to learn how to transmute what's our vibrational as well as master being our own alchemist and healing so that we can constantly be tempering ourselves while we're out there. But this is how we're going to build with our light and really expand because we're going to expand from within to without. We need that lovely energy of Sagittarius. And this is that firepower energy connected to the sun, connected to the moon. This is the six of wands. This is the six of wands right here. We're gonna hit our mark, we're gonna hit our aim. And this is being able to do so from a very far distance and take that shot and you make it. Because you're connected to your yin, you're connected to your yang. You have the God spark, you're in flow. And it's all connected to the first house, the body, our ascendant. And we know we can check that out in our natal chart, what sign we are ascending in. But this is the fool card. This is freedom. That's what this is. This is freedom. We're creating freedom within our bodies because we're connecting body, mind, soul, and we're healing, and we're connecting masculine, feminine, and child within to allow connection of healing. There's a six right there. We've created a six, we've created a balance within. And it all ties lovely into this beautiful card of Jupiter Returns. And this is when we plan and work hard to achieve our abundance coming back. This is, we've put thought into this. This is the chariot. This is the forward movement when we connect, when we make all those connections and we really expand. 
with our light. And we know that this is about our chakras right now and getting that wonderful flow connection with from the root to the crown. And there's a couple in there. There is a masculine and feminine within this card. And we know that lovely message of the Jupiter returns. I will link all the readings that we have gotten these in down below for anyone who hasn't checked them out yet and would like to. Right now, I, I feel like we're really connected to Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter. Jupiter is connected to the third eye and Saturn is connected to the crown. I just want to say, guys, to uh, Mars is the throat chakra. So... I know Venus. Venus is having a lot to do with things too. And that would be that would be connected to the heart chakra. Flower of life, cocoon stage, and we know we're expanding out of this right now. This is a really beautiful pattern. And really it's everything we've just discussed learning here today. You know, I'm not very good with math. I'm not very great with numbers. That's why I work on my left brain skills. But patterns, visual arts, just standing here, channeling messages with you guys, that just comes naturally with me. I think it's beautiful that there's people out there like Fibonacci who can help us make sense us people that don't don't do numbers so well help us make sense of these patterns these patterns we see without there in the universe and that's what fibonacci was doing he was observing patterns when he created the fibonacci spiral the fibonacci sequence and that's the gift we've been given today the gift of our investment of life he was investing in life. He was observing in life. We're about to break through. We're about to break through. And when we break through this cocoon, we will expand from within to without. And that's connected to the 13 spheres of knowledge. Within the third rotation, the flower of life is formed. The flower of life is considered to be the most sacred and the universal blueprint. It is said that the outer spheres kept the knowledge within. Its perfect form, proportion, and harmony are most sacred. It contains within it the tree of life as taught in the Kabbalah, as well as ancient runes. It is said to contain a vast Akashic system of information, including templates for the five platonic solids. Mm. It's also said that if you remove these two circles, you will ultimately know the secrets of the universe. This was the way in which the ancients encoded their knowledge. And it's all about when the time is right, we will give birth to our ideas. We will see them in form. We don't give up. It takes time. It's time to manifest here, guys. I hate to break it to you, me, myself, my dog sitting over here on the couch and everybody on the block, but it takes time to manifest here. Beautiful. What a beautiful pattern. Thank you, Sacred Geometry. Thank you, Fibonacci. As well as, you know, if I was a Greek mathematician, I'm excited to get into that. Okay, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't want to get the message from the angels and ancestors yet. Hold on. We're going to get a message from the masculine and the feminine and the child. So let's go there. Let's see. Let's 
get a message from Divine Masculine, please. A message from Divine Masculine. Okay. Kido. Thunderbolt. Woo. This is third eye activations right here. This is Thunderbolt. This is the, the tower. The man and the woman fall. And they're falling from this body. Because we know we're going to have a whole new body. We're going to have a whole new mind. We're setting our soul free. Our spirit and our soul are connected. Our sun and our moon. This is literally burning away within us to the core what is lower vibrational. It's within us. It's being burned away. If any of you are feeling different, divine masculine, getting those the darkness burned out from within. Sometimes we need help. Silence. This is divine feminine. All you divine feminines, this is a very, very beautiful message. As well as we know, we have the feminine energies within us, the masculine energies within us, as well as the child. The silent mirror, mirror-like receptiveness of a star-filled night with a full moon is reflected in the misty lake below. The face in the sky is deep in meditation. A goddess of the night who brings depth, peace, and understanding. Now is a very precious time. It will be easy for you to rest inside, to plumb the depths of your own inner silence to the point where it meets the silence of the universe. There's nothing to do now, nowhere to go, and the quality of your inner silence permeates everything you do. It might make some people uncomfortable. Accustomed to, they are to all the noise and activity of the world. Never mind, seek out those who can resonate with your silence or enjoy your aloneness. Now is the time to come home to yourself. The understanding and insights that come to you in these moments will be manifested later on in a more outgoing phase of your life. And this is a very beautiful message to myself included. And it's, it's time for the Divine Feminine to rest, to go within and to find her own voice, to find something within again, within the silence that will resonate to the silence within the universe but it won't be silent for long. There's gonna be a blossoming here. There's gonna be a connection. There's going to be an expansion. This is going to help with that Fibonacci sequence. And that's even myself, why I've been called to rest and take time off and say goodbye here to you guys for some time. And of course I'll be back, but we're gonna have schools out and then school will be coming back in session but it's time for the Divine Feminine to rest for her expansion. And it doesn't mean we don't wanna be there. It doesn't mean we don't wanna be there for the people we love. But I'm even seeing it within the, all the Divine Feminines within my life, with the Divine Feminines I work with in the collective. It's a pattern that's happening. We are all coming down with sicknesses, illnesses, and most of them are related to our 10 of Wands burdens. But that's not our lives anymore. We're gonna go within and we're gonna, we're gonna find the stillness and the patience within. We're gonna connect to our inner cycles and rhythms. And after we take that rest, we will come back. And boy, it's gonna be beautiful and luscious and go time. And we're gonna be full of more energy. Okay, the, let's get a message from the child. See what the child has to say today. So, 
got the tower for divine masculine, the star for the divine feminine, and the high, the high priestess is on the floor right now with the three of cups. We're dancing. There's the child dancing. That's the child dancing between the masculine and feminine energies we just discussed. Yin and yang. In flow. There's the book. And that's connected to our expansion. The knowledge of the universe. The secrets in the universe. Do you know that within this flower of life, there is the tree of life pattern within here? And we know that there is the connection with the masculine, feminine, and child. And we're all creating, yes, we're all creating something different, but we need all three of those energies within so we can navigate body, mind, soul. These are the navigators of body, mind, soul. So we stay balanced. And it's not of two, it's of three. And then we know we have source. We have mother earth. And we have the sky and the cosmos. Okay. We're just uh, going to get a message here from the sun and then the moon. Seven of swords. This is our message from the sun. The three of swords, what am I talking about? I thought that said seven. Three of swords. This is what we're healing with our solar plexus chakra. We're healing from our three of swords. And look at that, it's connected to our strength. The sacral chakra right there. And the moon. Now we know the meaning of strength. We got this on one of our last readings. And we know that's what we're doing. We need strength right now. With our sacral chakra. This three of swords. It's about letting go of what's no longer serving us. You know, sometimes we, lo we lose people in our life. Because they're no longer a vibrational match to us. And sometimes we lose people we love because it's part of the path. It's part of the experience to help us create with different energy patterns to move through the solar plexus because we want to connect to the moon. The moon is what's lighting our way in the darkness. It allows us to speak our truth, to play our authentic tune, and it's showing us what's no longer serving us. It's putting our fears right in front of our face. There is the connection to the dark and the light. You can see it. there's the, the two wolves. One is, one is white, one is black. And they both have light coming off their crowns. That's the masculine and the feminine now lit with crown chakra activations. We have got the, the flow. We're clearing the chakras, we're telling our truths, because we know we're going to expand. We need our third eye and our crown. It's pretty incredible that we just got a message from the sun about the new. That means yin and yang are connected. Masculine and feminine are connected. That's beautiful. We got the child present. We're becoming whole. The masters of healing. Now let's just get a message from the new. Well, look at that. Venus made her presence. Love. This is the Empress card in the tarot. And what's incredible is that the reading I was airing last night that was missing the reading. 
the Emperor and the Empress came out as a pair. And this is all about letting love lead your way. Just let love take care of it for now. Let love ride you out. Your love. Self-love. Love for all around you. Love within, love without. Try to find the positive charge. And we will talk about all the planets when we get back. We're going to start with Saturn. We're going to connect the chakras. talk about how the chakras relate to the planets we're gonna start stringing things together it's round two baby we gotta start stringing things together we're becoming multi-dimensional got a lot of layers around here okay this is our message from the angels and ancestors we're gonna say goodbye we're gonna say goodbye while school is out and then i'll see you again very soon wow here we go Shaolin Master, be grateful in movement and action. She-Wolf, unleash the wild within. Ooh. No problem there. Shaolin Master, be graceful in movement and action. Slow and steady, breathe and flow. Take a gander. Take a gander. Well, yeah, we can do that too. Take a gentler approach. The Shaolin master calls forth the ninja within. Shaolin medicine is about learning to adapt to a situation and tap into the energy running through your body and preserve it in order to release it at the right moment. It also teaches subtly because when you are too forceful, you use too much energy. And that may not be supportive of what you are working on. The Shaolin master, like a monk, has respect for all things. He is disciplined and guided by his art and will never use it to impress the foolish or to appear stronger than someone who is threatening him. You too are being invited to remain graceful in your movement, choices, and actions. And that's what we're doing. This is very important. This is all part of mastering ourselves and mastering healing. She will unleash the wild within. Let your wild side up and out. Unleash your talents and your desires up and out. The she wolf is a powerful shamanic soul who is half wolf and half woman. She is the alpha female who is not afraid to stand out from the crowd, or in this case, pack. She is the wild, unfiltered and unfettered. She, is, she encourages you not to be trapped by the limiting factors of weaker members of the pack or those who are trying to hunt you down because you have gift, gifts they don't like or understand. She represents the energy of the wilderness and the unknown. High Priestess energy. And encourages you to be free and unchained and go beyond boundaries. Release the animal energy within and track down what you need to do to express your true self. And that's what we need to do right now. We need to take a break, rest, recoup. We need to be that Shaolin master and really slow down and we need to gain momentum. And then we need to allow our, we need to let ourself out now and do everything within that car. Let's just get one more message. In fact, no, we're not. It's coming from Zen Tarot. Let's get one more message and we'll say goodbye. Our awareness within the dark, the connection to the masculine and feminine, 
and child. Completion, we're putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. Our divine blueprint, expanding through the dark with our light. We know we are the world. And this is about our celebrations. Our three of cups, our abundance, our best lives, our connections, our connections through the pain, the reflection of love. I wanna thank you guys for joining me here. I'll see you guys again when school is back in session. Until then, take care, heal up, and I'll speak to you very, very soon.